Hata as alleged by the mover. Otherwise, Mr. Speaker, I oppose this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I start by stating on record that I support this motion. And if you look at the names of those members of parliament who have appended their signatures uh, for the removal or initiation of the process of removal of this cabinet secretary, I am number 57. Well, Mr. Speaker, I want to just mention a few things. Number one, National Assembly, Mr. Speaker, has a responsibility. And this responsibility is given to us by the people of Kenya through cons the constitution that we have today. Article 95, Mr. Speaker, 5 of the constitution, and I want to read, gives the National Assembly the responsibility to review the conduct of the of in, in office of the president, the deputy president, and other state officers, including cabinet secretaries, and initiates the process of removing them from office. So, Mr. Speaker, what we are embarking on today is one of those cardinal responsibilities given to National Assembly by the people of Kenya to review the conduct of a cabinet secretary, one uh, mythical in Turi, to hold office with a view to initiate the process of removing him. But Mr. Speaker, I want to plead with those members of parliament who think they want to save mythical in Turi. If I were you, if you love this cabinet secretary, the more reason you should vote for this motion. Mr. Speaker, today we are not removing Mithika Linturi. By this motion, we are not removing Mithika Linturi. If you look at, if you read, Mr. Speaker, Article 152 of the Constitution, which gives details of how to remove a cabinet secretary from office, it states that if a motion it states that a member of the National Assembly, like Honorable Jack Wamboka, has done, supported by at least one quarter of all the members of the Assembly, may propose a motion requiring the President to dismiss a Cabinet Secretary. That is the motion we are dealing with today. And the grounds are stated. But, Mr. Speaker, the, article, the same, same article goes ahead to mention that if this motion is supported by at least one third this morning of the members of the National Assembly, then the Assembly shall appoint a select committee comprises of, comprising of 11 of its members to investigate the matter. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the documents presented to us by Honorable uh, Wamboka, the only way justice can be done to this Cabinet Secretary is for this House to push this matter forward so that a select committee of this House will have an opportunity to look at this, the details as presented. How else, Mr. Speaker, will we even know that this telephone call was made by Honorable Mithika Linturi if we, do not, if we don't give opportunity to this House to appoint a select committee to go and scrutinize, get to the bottom of these details, and bring a report to us if they find that these matters are not substantiated, if the committee shall find that these matters are not properly substantiated, then the matter will end there. The committee will report back to the House and the matter will die. But if the matters will have been found to have been substantiated, then this House will proceed to take another vote, Mr. Speaker, where even before we take the vote, we will present Honorable Mithika Linturi with an opportunity to address this parliament and defend himself. That is the time we will know that he is innocent or is not innocent. But stopping this process at this stage would be reckless, would be careless, and would demonstrate a house that does not know its responsibility. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to also add that it is not just on grounds of gross violation of the provisions of this constitution that you would initiate a process of removing a cabinet secretary. It is not only on the grounds of where serious reasons of believing that the cabinet secretary has committed a crime under the national and international law that a process like this would be initiated. This process would even be initiated if we have a reason to believe that there is gross misconduct on the part of the cabinet secretary. And Mr. Speaker, 
based on the evidence that Honorable Amboka has presented to this House, and particularly I'm concerned about the issues of National Cereals and Produce Board. Mr. Speaker, the first question that I would ask those who want to oppose this motion, are you telling us that National Cereals and Produce Board would go ahead with the budgetary provisions given by this House as proposed by the Cabinet Secretary, presented to us, we give out money, this money goes and buys cocoto instead of fertilizer given to our farmers, and only whistleblowers are able to know, yet we have a, 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 a ministry which has a cabinet secretary heading that ministry, and that cabinet secretary is ignorant. But Mr. Speaker, what worries me more is the evidence that is produced before us through a letter that is written by a lawyer, Ahmed Nasir Mohammed. And clearly, Ahmed Nasir is telling us that Mythical Intur even attempted to subvert justice by trying to, to dictate or order this particular farm, uh, uh, factory to go and issue a statement. And the evidence is there. The telephone number is there. Calls were made. Safari can, 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 can confirm the same. And that is why I want to plead with this House, Mr. Speaker, that this is a matter that we cannot treat casually. This is a matter of hunger. It is a matter of food. It is a matter of food security in this country. It is a matter that can bring this country to anarchy, as the minority leader said. We must show responsibility. You are elected by your people to come and speak for them. They don't have a voice. They cannot talk to Mythical Inturi. It is you who can speak to Mythical Inturi. It is you who can speak to William Ruto, who appointed Mythical Inturi. And when these cabinet secretaries were appointed, Mr. Speaker, I remember saying that this is going to go in the records of history as the most incompetent cabinet. And you can already see that some people are protecting Mr. Speaker, Mythical Inturi, and claiming that he was ignorant of what was happening in National Cereals and Produce Board. Mr. Speaker, if Mr. Linturi yes, can be ignorant order. of what is happening at the National Cereals order and Bobby. Produce Board, then what can be he, he be ignorant about? Is this is an incompetent... Order, Bobby, there's a point of order. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I rise pursuant to standing order number 83, as read together with standing order number 91 on the accuracy of information that is being provided by my very good friend, the Honorable Mbadi. Mr. Speaker, is it in order for the, for the member of parliament, for the nominated member of parliament to claim that he had already made up his mind from the time the cabinet secretaries were nominated or appointed that they were incompetent so that his information that he had at that time, which he never gave us in the house, when we were approving Mythical Linturi. Is it in order, Mr. Speaker, for somebody to redact information which we thought he had, or which he thinks he should have had? The accuracy of his information, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, is in fact wanting. He is alleging that, in, in fact, the conduct of the president is not an issue here. In fact, if he wants to bring a substantive motion with the issue of the con he should not mention the president. He is not part of the motion that is in the House. The motion is in the House is with regard to the Honorable Mythical Nduri, who was his colleague in the 13th Parliament. Mr. Speaker, is it in order for him to claim that he had this information, but he never gave to the House? That is very misleading, Mr. Speaker. Why do I end up? Mr. Speaker, you know Honorable Jeb Konga could be older than me by age but he is not older than me in this house, and I don't know why he's rusting so early. You still have time to be here, so don't rust. Please just remain active, focus on what I say. Mr. Speaker, I was up reminding the president, we are appealing to the president as the appointing authority. That is what we are doing here. The president has 
to remove this cabinet secretary from office. We are speaking to him. We are telling him this is one of your incompetent cabinet secretaries. Please hear us. Listen to us. I said this when these cabinet secretaries were being approved. It is on record. I even use words that I don't want to repeat today. So, Mr. Speaker, what I'm saying in a nutshell, Mr. Speaker, as I wind up, I want to plead with this House. Please allow this motion to go through so that we can appoint a select committee of 11 members to interrogate this matter, look at it into details, look at the evidence adduced, so that if there is no evidence, we will let Linturi continue running the ministry. If there is evidence, let us get him out, get another Kenyan, even if we want a Kenyan from that region where he comes from. There are so many competent Kenyans from that region, that county, that part of the, the, the country. Mr. Speaker, I want to plead and persuade, including the majority leader, support this motion so that we can have these matters settled in a professional manner through the committee of this house. Mr. Speaker, I support. Majority leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I hear my good friend, Honorable John Buddy, asking me to support, and I rise to oppose this motion, Honorable Speaker, by the Honorable Member for Bumula, the Honorable Jack Wanami Wamboka. But allow me, Honorable Speaker, to take this opportunity to thank the Honorable Jack Wamboka for having the courage and fortitude to not only collect signatures and bring this motion, but also to prosecute it. Although he has performed dismally in his prosecution of the motion, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I keenly listened to you on Tuesday when you communicated, made your communication, Honorable Speaker, on this motion. Honorable Speaker, this House is guided, or rather, as you stated, is a House of Rules, and is guided by, not just by the standing orders, but also by a Constitution. Honorable Speaker, if you read through uh, Standing Order 64 to 66, of our standing orders, you will realize that the Honorable Wamboka's motion falls flat and contra our standing orders and also the Constitution, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, it is also true that matters to do with removal of office of public officers, as you stated in your communication, Honorable Speaker, are largely guided also by precedents and borrows heavily from court rulings and the threshold set in. Honorable Speaker, the famous Wambora cases on the removal of uh, former governor for Embu County speaks volumes. Honorable Speaker, in that case, the Wambora case, one of the things that was made clear is that there must be a very clear nexus between the person being removed from office and the alleged grounds on which that removal is sought. Therefore, the question we ought to ask ourselves, Honorable Speaker, has the mover of this motion, Honorable Jack Wamboka, created or shown us that nexus between the person being removed from office as cabinet secretary and the alleged grounds of removal? And the straight answer, Honorable Speaker, is none. There is completely no nexus between the allegations that the Honorable Jack Wamboka presented in his moving of this motion, Honorable Speaker. And indeed, Honorable Speaker, if you listen to Honorable Jack Wamboka, Honorable Speaker, if you can protect me from the members who are consulting very loudly. Honorable Speaker, I'm asking if you can protect me from the loud consultations. Order, especially here. Order, honorable members. Yeah, members on their feet. Your standing orders say only the members speaking should be on their feet. If you are in transit, then transit to where you are going. Go on. 